Um, yeah, it's thankful for the fans that showed up today. I know it's uh, especially the students, um, exam week and all that stuff, dead week and everything that goes on and with it and for them to take the time to come. I was thankful for that. Uh, very pleased with our guys. You know, um, obviously, uh, Incarnate Word is a little under man. They got, had some injuries um, and they're missing some guys. And uh, this could easily be a, a me game where guys are trying to get theirs. And I, I really challenged them to make it a we game and really work on the things we need to work on and share the ball and be great teammates. And, and I thought we did that. And then uh, we let down a little bit in the first half with some transition buckets and some easy cuts, backdoor cuts. and. At halftime, we challenged them to really lock in and uh, away from the bench and talk and really do a better job uh, defensively. And I thought for the most part, we did that. So I'm a happy coach. You started 9-1, and one, which is, I think, Tom says the best start for a Kansas State coach in history in the 10 through 10 games. Just what does that mean at this point? Um, like, no, like we, we, our whole stat was such like forward thinkers and so it's not like about what we've accomplished about the next thing and so um did what we need to do today and now the next couple of days we got to figure out what's the best thing to do to get us be best prepared to do a great job with our exams and then be ready for nebraska and so i, I really hadn't thought about that is there a certain part of your team that you kind of want to attack between now and the nebraska game um no, it's just continuing to get a little bit better at everything, right? I think we can be a little bit better defensively. I think uh, um, in transition, we can uh, take care of the ball a little bit better. You know, there's just uh, little things just continue to get better. And, and now we're going to start facing some opponents where we're going to have to, like, change up a little bit how we guard or maybe be more about – um, their strengths than about what we want to do. And and so we're going to see how we can adjust, you know, um, when you're playing certain teams that you have to take certain things away. Coach, does 10 games give you the right barometer for what your team is, what you have, and the adjustments you need to make? I, I think we have a pretty good idea of uh, where we're at right now. Um, and some things that we need to improve on, both individually and collectively. Um, but the, the numbers just tell you where you're at. It doesn't tell you what you can become. And I mean, as you can see, uh, you know, I mean, David's taken a big stride. You know, I, I think Desi is real close to taking another big stride. And and so I, I, I I trusted Dorian today, and you see what happens when he gets minutes. He's a, he's a good basketball player, right? And uh, and so our host, all of us, we're just all getting to know each other a little bit more, getting a little bit better. I think uh, Marquise and I are starting to see the game the same way, you know, and and that that's helping us. And so and and I'm I'm starting getting to see it through his eyes some too. You know, there's some adjustments there between both of us to allow him to be the best version of himself and give us the best chance to win. So it's a constant growth process in this. Do you feel like your defense is still outpacing your offense? And is that gap narrowed at all? Uh, I, I, I won't, I'm not going to be able to tell until we play some, so like we got to play a couple more teams that like can take it, like they're physically as good as we are. You know, and then you'll be able to get an idea. I, I hope that we're the kind of defensive team that that we've shown, and I think I think uh, like we're top 40 in the country defensively. Um, the goal is to be top 25. You know, so we've got some improvement to do. And today they shot 50 something percent from three, and you know you just can't do that against you know good teams. And so we, you know, there's some always areas to improve on. Can you go into just a little bit more about what you liked about what, what Dorian did today? Well, he, he didn't play scared, right? Like he didn't look deer in the headlights when he went out there. Um, and then I thought he was aggressive from the, the very beginning. And, and, you know, if you're going to get subbed out the game, get subbed out for being aggressive and trying to do something, not because you're like, it was just out there. Right. And so that, that's the thing. And uh, you can, he's, he's an, he's, 
been, I mean, through every practice, every, he's our best rebounding guard, and he showed it, right? And um, so I, I, I like, I really like Dorian. I think he's going to help us. I think we need him to help us uh, as we go into the Big 12 because, uh, you know, guards win games for you. And, and I think there are times when having three guards, uh, a wing, and a center is better for us than having two guards, two wings, and a center. So I need him to come along. And then there was one point after he hit that first three and made his way down towards your guys' end of the bench and was playing defense and was on the ball. And it seemed like you guys were, were fairly fired up. Was that because of him and how he was playing defense, or was that yeah, something else? Yeah, he, he did a great job, had the ball on the side, guarded one-on-one, -on -one, cut off the middle with his chest. I mean, the stuff we work on on practice, and uh, I think the guys, the staff was excited, the, the bench was excited to see him do it. And I mean, we see him do things at practice all the time, and, and so given the opportunity, it was good to see him do it out there on the floor. <clears throat> Coach, I know you guys got about a week before you go down to Kansas City and play Nebraska, but... Um, how excited are you now that we're starting to get towards the conference season to finally be able to play, like you mentioned, some teams that maybe are a little bit more physical, a little bit more talented? Just what is that like for you as a coach? Um, nerve wracking. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, so you're still like, I, I know we're going to fight, right? I know we're going to like, like we're going to compete, right? And, and so it's um, in those moments, Right, are we gonna be able to make big plays? And you know, because it's it's a player's game. Players make plays, and so um, I, I am excited. I am excited to see where we're at, you know, and 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 watch us take another step. And um, you know, just you kind of gauge uh, based on your opponents. So you know, watching LSU beat Wake Forest the other night, and so you say, man, LSU is a good team. You know, because sometimes you come away after win and you say, okay, well, maybe then they weren't as good as we thought. But then you watch them do that and you say, okay, so they were a good team and it was a good win, you know. And, and so it's, that's kind of how you gauge it going forward. But I, I tell you, I, I am so thankful for the group that we have, right? Like, and I, I wouldn't trade any of them and, and uh, feel really blessed then, and that our staff did a, a very good job of evaluating the character of our guys. And I think we have the right group. I know I know we have the right group on the bus. And I, I, I don't know how much you pay attention to um, bracketology, that kind of stuff, but Lenardi currently has nine Big 12 teams. Um, and uh, just more as a general question, how good are you expecting the league to be uh, this the, season? The league is incredible. Wh who's not in? Like, uh, in my, like, like, he says, not, who's not in? Who's not an NCAA tournament caliber team in our league? Right. I mean, so it's yeah, it's it's going to be a bunch of one possession games, people beating up on each other. And, um, you know, you just, you know, good coach, good coach, good coach, swish, great coach, good coach, good coach, good coach, coach boing, bad coach. You know, I mean, that's that's what it's going to come down to. And so um, so so I'm looking forward to it. I want to ask you about Keontae. Uh, coming into the season, I think some people maybe thought he'd have some rust after not playing in so long. We're 10 games in. They haven't really seen that. What, what it, why is it that he could just hit the ground running here, you think? He's a special player, man. He's a special player. And I, I think, uh, like, you have to ask him this, but I'm pretty sure he's been playing basketball since that time right <laughs> i mean he's been he's been hooping he's been getting himself ready for the opportunity and uh for us it was just about getting his legs underneath him and uh you know and then you know finding uh the best ways to put him in position to you know allow his talents to shine and um so it's yeah it's like and then look effortless like he looks it looks effortless for him out there like I mean, sometimes I wonder if he's playing hard, you know, and but then you see the the readouts of the numbers and his speed up and down the court and his, his jumps and you say, man, my man was getting after it, but it just looks so easy for him. So, yeah, I, I'm amazed too. <laughs> a little bit earlier, you said that you think Desi is close to a bit of a breakout. Is there, do you think that's mostly with his three-point shooting? He's struggled a little bit again today. Is that something that you're looking to see improvement in? No, it's all his overall game. 
just his overall game. I think right now he's still kind of thinking, um, you know, and because he's thinking, like, uh, we've got to get him out of his head and into his body. And um, like you see, David is out of his head. Early on, he was in his head. He was thinking too much. And, you know, we ran the ISO for him today, and he didn't even think. He caught it, faced up, boom, made the move. You know, I think Desi is catching and thinking. and, and But Desi missed – August to October, so it's going to take him a little bit longer, but I think he's going to get there where he's out of his head into his body, and, you know, you just see it coming. And then defensively, can you describe what you've kind of seen out of Cam Carter to this point in the season? Man, Cam, Cam's got some, uh, I, I, I call it a, a goon. Like, he, he wants to guard the other team's best player, and, and he's going to get his hand on the ball, and he's going to play with his chest, and, you know, he's, he's just going to compete, you know, is and – that that's why I love Louisiana kids. You know, the, I call them Louisiana animals, and I think him and Dorian could be the next two Louisiana animals that I've coached. We good? Any other questions? All right. Thank, Man. You. Thank you all.